Well, hello, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, pastor of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ and prelate of North Carolina Third Jurisdiction. I'm here with another, the Bible says this, what say you, Psalms 33 and verse 4, the A clause says, for the word of the Lord is right. Now, it's been a while since we've done one of these, uh, the Bible says this, what say you, and we've been talking to you in other ways. We've been out on uh, our YouTube channel and on television, and, and we've we posted certain uh, 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 diatribes of mine and when I uh, spoke on certain issues, but I want to talk to you today about something that is near and dear to my heart, and I'm going to kind of work backwards on this. I want to talk to you about the significance of the nation of Israel and the role it plays uh, in um, uh, prophecy, the role it plays in the mind of God, and the role that it plays in our lives. Because, my friends, Israel is, is, is uh, central to the role of God, the work of God in, in, with the human race, as a matter of fact. The Bible says this. I want to I work backwards a little bit. And this is a day that I pray that I'm about to read about that never happens in our lifetime. I hope that we never see it. The Bible says in uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 21 and verse 24, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. The Bible also says in Romans uh, chapter 11, uh, if you read this, you will see prophecies of what God says would happen to uh, 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 Jerusalem. Jerusalem chapter, Romans chapter 11 and verse 25 speaks clearly to this. It says, for I would not, uh, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery lest you should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part is happened to Israel. The nation of Israel spiritually doesn't even see its, uh, its own importance itself right now. Blindness has in part happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved for it is written, there shall come out of Zion a deliverer and shall turn away uh, ungodliness from Jacob. And my covenant, and this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins according to the gospel. Look at this. And they, and look at this, according to the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, but as touching the election, they, they are beloved for the Father's sake, for the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. What is the point here? The thing that the God of the Bible determined to do with the nation of Israel since the conception of the nation, even going back to what God promised Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, the Lord is still going to perform his works for his gifts and callings are not, they are without repentance. Now, uh, people apply this to the gift to sing or the calling to preach or talents. That's not, what, contextually, that's not what that scripture is about at all. Contextually, it's about the promise that God made to Abraham, the, the intention, the purpose of forming the Jewish race in the first place. What is my, what is your concern, uh, Bishop Wooden? My concern is when you look at the headlines today, I am deeply troubled when I hear comments from elected representatives of Congress, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez out of New York, Rashid Tlaib out of Michigan, Ayanna Presley out of Massachusetts, and uh, Ilyan Omar of Minnesota, these ladies have said some pretty um, uh, anti-Semitic things about Israel, and I'm wondering if their comments, and their, I can go back further uh, and talk about comments from other people, if their comments 
aren't the beginning of the salvos of even, yes, America's greatest partner in the world, uh, America, uh, if this is not the beginning of America beginning to turn her back on the nation of Israel, which would be a mistake, I believe, that one of the reasons America is blessed as she is, is because of her allegiance to the nation of Israel. The Bible teaches in Psalms 122, verse 6 and 7, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. And the Bible goes on, for my brethren and, it says, for my brethren and companions sake, I will now vow peace within Thee, because of the house of the Lord our God, will I seek thy good. Israel is special to the God of the Bible. Even their location, the Bible says in Psalms 48, verse 1 and 2, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mount of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, beautiful in its loftiness, beautiful in its elevation, uh, beautiful, the Bible says, for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. Did you see that? The joy, Psalms 48 and verse 2, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. Uh on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. God is known in her palaces for a refuge. My friends, Israel is beautiful to the God of the Bible, and the God of the Bible is going to defend the nation of Israel and everyone who sides with Israel, even in their backslidden state, uh, sides with God. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 35, chapter 31, excuse me, and uh, verse 35, I want to just read this to you. The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar, the Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Look at this. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if the heavens above can be measured and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off the seed of Israel for all that they have done, saith the Lord. That is, God is saying, God is saying, if you can get rid of the sun, if you can get rid of the stars, if you can uh, get rid of the moon, if you can disturb the order of the universe, then I will get rid of Israel. My friends, God is with the nation of Israel, and I pray that Christians, uh, America and all who are involved will s continue to side with Israel. This is not this is not an area where you can play politics with it. The things that uh, uh, some of these representatives have said are things that just simply aren't right. And uh, and uh, of late, you know, they were in the news. And uh, Representative Tlaib, she wanted to visit her 90-year-old grandmother. Israel said you could visit your grandmother, but you cannot participate in certain uh, activities that Israel by law prohibits, that has been voted into law, that teaches that uh, a, a, it prohibits any entry into Israel of any foreigner who makes a public call for boycotting Israel, which is what uh, Representative Tlaib is guilty of. She's a part of uh, a, 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 a boycott of Israel. It's called the Boycott di uh, Divestment and Sanction Movement, better known as BDS. It is a Palestinian-led campaign promoting various forms of boycott against boycott against Israel until it meets 
of what the campaign describes as Israel's obligations under international law, defined as withdrawal from the occupied territories, removal of the separation, separation barriers in the West Bank, full equality for Arab Palestinian citizens of Israel, and respecting, protecting, and promoting the rights of Palestinian refugees to return to their home and properties. Uh, this campaign is organized and coordinated by Palestinians BDS National Committee, a committee that has also uh, praised uh, terrorists and, and different things. And these, these ladies wanted to come and Israel, according to its own law, said you couldn't. And then when Israel said, well, you know what? If you want to see your grandma, then you can come and see your grandmother. And then all of a sudden, uh, Talib cries and decides that she's not going to go and see her grandmother under these oppressive, uh, 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 this oppressive si situation. My concern is this. Is this the harbinger? Is this a harbinger? Is this the sign of things to come? Are we, uh, as a nation, beginning to turn our backs on Israel? For the turn your back on Israel is to turn your back against God. Quick little lesson. Quick little lesson. When God made Adam, God made Eve before the fall, God made the human race. And the human race was perfect. God looked at it. As a matter of fact, ladies, when after God finished making the, the woman, the Bible says uh, in, in, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was, check this out, not good. It was very good. The morning and the evening was the sixth day. So when, once God made the uh, Eve, brought her to Adam, made the human race, made them male and female. And by the way, male and female only. Uh, God said it was very good, but according to Genesis chapter 6, you know what happened. Well, in chapter 3, there was the fall of man. In chapter 6, man had become so wicked that the Bible teaches that God saw the wickedness of man, Genesis 6 and 5, and how it was great in the earth, and that the imaginations of the thoughts of man's hearts were only evil continually. This says, and it, and it repented the Lord that he had made man. So God decides to destroy uh, the human race from the face of the earth. But a wonderful thing happened in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 8. It says, but Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. And you know what happened. Noah preached that it was going to rain. The flood comes in Genesis chapter 7 and uh, the flood lasts. And then after the flood, uh, after a year or so, the, the one year and 10 days, the flood waters recede. And then God in Genesis chapter 9, God blessed Noah and his sons. And the Lord said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And that is exactly what happens. But by Genesis chapter Chapter number 11, we find the human race rebelling against God. We find mankind. We don't know how much time passed. The book of Genesis take huge leaps in time. So as men begin to uh, uh, rebel against God, God sends an angel down at the Tower of Babel and he confounds and confuse their languages where they couldn't communicate and the human race is separated. After the human race is separated, the Lord reaches over into the land of the Chaldees, current day Iran, over in that area, Mesopotamia, and he finds a young boy by the name of Abram, and the Lord appears to him. The appearance of God to Abram is so powerful that it changes his life. God tells Abram, Abram grows up, God tells him, uh, according to Genesis chapter 12, and you can read about God's appearance to him, uh, and the, the genealogy, I mean, in chapter 11, it says in verse uh, chapter 12, verse 1, Now the Lord said unto Abram, the Lord had said to Abram, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will curse, I will bless them that bless thee, I will curse him that curseth thee. And look at this, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God's plan was to bless and save the world through the nation of Israel. And my friends, I just read to you in Romans where God's plan, he has not deviated from that plan. He has not 
uh, uh, turned from that plan for the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Israel was precious in the sight of the Lord. Then Israel is precious in the sight of the Lord. Now we see in Deuteronomy chapter seven, where the Lord says to the nation of Israel, the Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were more in number than any, any people for you were the fewest of all, but the Lord loved you. And, but because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath, which he have sworn to your fathers, the oath that he made to Abraham, the oath that he made to Isaac, the more oath that he made to Jacob, that he sworn to your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen, of bondmen from the land of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. God says, I chose you because I brought you out because I made a promise. And I'm going to keep the promise that I made. And my friends, the, the, every promise that God has made to the nation of Israel, God has kept that promise and he will continue to keep his promises. And I pray that those who are preachers do not let being a Democrat or let being a Republican or let being of a certain shade uh, cloud your judgment on this matter. All Christians should speak up for the nation of Israel. No, Israel is not perfect. All nations get things wrong. But let me tell you, let me tell you, God is with this nation and this nation uh, is in the plan of God. The Bible even teaches that it, there will be salvation in, in, in Israel. The Bible teaches that they are going to mourn for the one that they pierced. The Jews are going to mourn for Jesus Christ. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10, I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and the spirit of supplication, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one that mourneth for his only son. Yes, it was the Jews who said, crucify him, crucify him. But Zechariah prophesies of a day when that same nation will mourn for Jesus Christ and they will turn to him and he will be their savior. Jeremiah just read where God's gonna defend that nation. Even when the nation is compassed about with armies and even when the nation goes through, the nation will prevail. And I want you to know that those of us who pray for the peace of Jerusalem, those of us who believe uh, in the, this great nation, Israel, we are, we are blessed. And I pray, I pray that we will take a stand. I pray that we won't play politics with this. I pray that we will see these things for what they are. They, these are signs. These are signs that we're going in the wrong direction. Uh, these four elected ladies, uh, God bless them. Uh, I pray that they, they get saved. But some of the comments that they have made about Israel, our support for Israel is all about the Benjamins. It's not about the money. It's about scripture. It's about recognizing the role that Israel plays. Those of us in America who are loyal to the nation of Israel, we haven't forgotten what country we represent, uh, represented to lead. We know that we are a part of, uh, of America, but we also understand what the God of the Bible, the God of the Bible, not the God of the Quran, not the God of other books, but the God of the Bible says about this nation. No, I don't believe that Israel has hypnotized the world, but I do believe this, that the God of the Bible Bible, as Omar has claimed, but the God of the Bible will, Representative Omar, will one day use Israel to win the loss, to win souls, to, to uh, during the tribulation, they will preach, they will turn to Jesus Christ. This is our belief. And I want to say to you, stand with Israel, pray for that nation, and pray that we keep a favorable foreign policy with the nation of Israel. It was the right thing for our embassy to be moved to Jerusalem, recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital. It is the right thing to support Israel as they keep, I pray that they keep the Golan Heights. From the Golan Heights, oh my, from those areas, Israel can stand and view all of its enemies on every side. I am a staunch supporter of the nation of Israel, not because of any political party, not because because who may 
may occupy the White House at any given time, but because of what I believe that the Bible says about this great nation, and I've just began to scratch the surface with the plethora of scriptures that are in the Bible that speaks to this great nation. But you know what? I'm out of time. And you know, when we're doing these things, you can't take but so much uh, your, uh, uh, at, at a given time. And after a while, people just turn to something else. I don't want to go on and on and on. But let me tell you, let me tell you, I'm right on this. And the Bible is right. And I pray that every one of us will pray for Israel. Pray for Jerusalem. Pray that the, look at this, this in, in this tiny piece of land. Smaller than the state of Florida. Wow. This tiny piece of land. This is the land that all of the commotion is about. That God gave to Abraham. That God told. This is the land in Genesis chapter 15 where God tells Abraham, walk. Walk throughout the land. Walk throughout it. Walk throughout the land. Everything you see, I'm going to give it to you. And God gave it to him. And it belonged to the to the Jewish people. And thank God that uh, uh, that Israel uh, is is walking in that land, possessing that land. And we're praying for them that God will continue to bless even the great prophecies of the Bible. The Bible prophesied that Israel, this this land, uh, this parched land, how this land, the Bible says in Isaiah. I got to tell you this one. I just got to throw this in. Isaiah 35. Gary, we're out of time, but let me throw this in. Isaiah 35 and one says, the wilderness and a solitary place shall be a gla shall be glad for them and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as a rose and it shall blossom abundantly and 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 rejoice even with the with joy and singing now here is god prophesying that uh israel would blossom a desert would blossom as a rose and you know what when you think about the country of Israel, the nation of Israel, uh, when the country is being mentioned in conversation, look at this. Among the things that they talk about, the one of the things that come to mind when you talk about Israel are their flowers, their roses, their tulips, their flowers, because the nation has blossomed. God took a desert land and made it blossom as a rose. What a mighty God we serve. So my friends, the Bible says this, what say you? I'll be reading your comments, I'll be watching, and uh, may God's choice, blessings be yours. Stand with Israel, you'll be glad you did.